Hey David, we're gonna go back together with your 4L6DE starting today. So wanted to give you a quick rundown of everything we're gonna be doing, all the parts we're gonna be installing, so you know what's going on. For anyone else watching, a little bit of background on this transmission. It was rebuilt approximately six months or roughly 500 miles ago by another shop here in town. And it was one of the worst rebuilds I've ever seen. So many mistakes were made. Uh, they installed half of a Sonics HP1 performance pack. Uh, they reused aluminum pistons in the forward drum, which catastrophically failed, though that's, you know, the reuse of the pistons was not the reason for that. Um, I won't bore you with the rest of the details. Uh, if you want to check out the full carnage, um, watch my 4L60E teardown video. It's on the channel now. But uh, suffice to say, we have to correct a lot of mistakes that were made. So we'll start off with the bow body. Um, they installed half of an HP1 performance pack from Sonics. They have pinless accumulators in here, a 2-3 heavy-duty shift valve, but <laughs> they failed to drill the little 125 thousandths hole that you need to drill in the casting to facilitate the full function and benefit that this valve kit gives you. So uh, here's where you drill that hole. And uh, they also did not leave out the number six flow control check ball for the coast clutch. So we'll do that here. Uh, we're also going to install an oversized drop-in actuator feed limit valve from Central Valve Bodies. Um, this circuit was testing, I want to say 12 or 12 and a half inches. That is borderline sketchy, so a drop-in valve should bring it up to 15 or so, and that's where we want to be. I'm also going to shim this valve with an inner spring from a Transgo shift kit so that it, you know, receives the full benefit of proper solenoid pressure feed to all of the solenoids, particularly the EPC, or electronic pressure control solenoid. We're also gonna install abuse valve kits. So we have an abuse valve kit here for the forward. And then for the reverse position, we also have a Sonics abuse valve kit. And again, these parts come in the HP1 performance pack. You can also buy them separately. Um, here are all the part numbers for each of these things respectively. 77754-35K, that's for your abuse valve of spring and plug kit. And then this is the heavy-duty 2-3 shift valve, 77754-41. And then for the central valve bodies uh, part, it's 4L60E-AFL. So anyway, they did install the end plug kit. Uh, they feature O-rings as well as, um, you know, just a better overall design. So I guess good on them for that. And the Ford accumulator pinless piston, they did that correctly. Uh, they did install brand new shift solenoids as well as new... Um, uh, um, PWM solenoid, but they installed two of these PWM solenoids, uh, one here and one in the 3-2 control position, uh, and that's not the correct solenoid. You have to use this uh, solenoid, this is a Rostra, with the white connector because these function at a different amperage and offer a different resistance value in ohms when you test them with a multimeter, and they're not interchangeable between uh, the different command and control structures. So 93, 94, and early 95, you use two of these PWM solenoids in the valve body, one in the PWM control position for 95 early, and then another one in the 3-2 control position because that was a PWM or pulse width modulated apply strategy for the 3-2 control valve. So anyway, uh, that's the story with the valve body. We have to correct a lot of mistakes they made or things they didn't do. And then for our pump, there is a um, oversized pressure regulator valve that comes in the HP1 kit 77917-07. Uh, they did not ream this casting and install that valve. Uh, you know, had the factory valve in there and it was pulling something like 12 inches of vacuum. So we'll correct that. And then uh, they didn't replace either of the bushings. I mean, look how worn these bushings are. This bushing in the rear of the stator shaft in particular will cause trouble code P1870 or P0894 in the later units uh, if it's wore out enough and, you know, no amount of valve body repair replacement will get that code to go away. It'll just keep coming back until you take the unit out and address the bushing situation. So um, new electronic pressure control solenoid from Rostra and um, all new pressure switch manifold and other electricals. So. We'll go over here to the main bench where we have all of our bolts and small parts laid out. Uh, the shop did install a Corvette servo. It's in perfect shape, so we'll just put that back in. And we'll also install a brand new D-ring seal kit for the servo, which it did come in with that. So, you know, the shop did, did do some things correctly, but there were so many things that were done incorrectly. It's, you know, over, completely overshadows uh, the few things they did right. 
So they did not machine the pump castings, we did so. And then we're gonna install a Sonics Teflon coated bushing. Um, it looks like they did do that, but, or maybe it was uh, in there previously. I mean, this is a Sonics bushing, or it appears to be, but needless to say, it's heavily wore out. We would never reuse it. All right, overhaul kit, Transgo 4696 plate, wiring harness, manual lever position sensor, new rotor guide with new pump vanes. Um, rotor and slide kit so all oem and then here are the pinless accumulators for the one two and the three four positions brand new bushing kit new vehicle speed sensor they didn't replace the old speed sensor and they installed the extension housing upside down so the speed sensor was also upside down um, again total amateur hour basically so um, this was a 96 unit that they worked on. That's what came out of the truck. And anytime you're working on any 700R4 or 4L60E up through 1996, you need to install a bonded piston set in place of the aluminum pistons in the forward drum. And you need to also install the um, later return spring assembly for your forward and close clutch position. That's 242-06085. This will allow you to retro this entire service pack into the forward drum and by doing so, you get much better pistons, particularly the forward piston, which likes to crack in the aluminum versions. Uh, you'll mitigate that risk going forward, and you won't have to worry about the unit coming back to you in the event that happens. Okay, so XD clutch module, late uh, steel module, 97 and up with the tubular steels. Uh, I will retro this to any 700R4 early 4L60E. I never buy the older style steel modules. Okay, all new one-way assemblies as well, so a new Sprag. The shop that rebuilt this did put a new forward Sprag in. They also put a new low roller clutch, but given what happened inside that unit, I don't trust either of those parts, so we just are going to go back with it new. And here's that pressure switch manifold. I don't know what the hell's doing all the way over here. Uh, filter, shallow pan filter. Um, they did not install a dipstick stop, so I got to dig in my bin back there. I have a whole bunch of them. And uh, I'll have to put a dipstick stop here on the bench. They also use what appears to be 4L80 E-bolts, which are fine. I mean, you know, uh, uh, maybe the uh, transmission came in without bolts and that's what they had. No big deal. We'll reinstall them. All right. Um, what else? So 3-4 clutch pack. We have one apply plate. So that's the one with the legs. And that is going to be this one right here. Part number is going to be 242. 217451. And I got two different backing plates here um, of two different thicknesses. And this will help me kind of dial in the 3 4 clutch pack clearance, which should be somewhere between 28 and 40 thousandths. 2421460 for this one. And I believe this is a, a 200 thousandths or 217 thousandths, something like that. There is a 160 thousandths version for the 4L65Es. Uh, that's what you want to use if you want to run a 7 clutch 6 steel stack in the 3.4. Uh, we had to replace the forward clutch backing plate as well as the reverse input backing plate. So I just have those in my stock good used. And then a brand new reverse input drum with wide 2.4 band. Anytime you're running a, a new reverse input drum, which is going to be almost every single one of these you build because the uh, pre-existing drum is almost always warped on the band surface, it's a good idea to run a wide band because it covers almost the entirety of the surface of the drum versus the factory spec band, which only covers about maybe 80% or 75%, something like that. Okay, I mentioned that the forward drum catastrophically failed in the old unit, so obviously we can't use that. I'll show you that in a minute, but uh, this is a good used drum from Transtar, and I did pressure test it to make sure it was not leaking here where the shaft is pressed into the drum. So I put a little bit of transmission fluid, then put shop air here. The forward, this is the um, two, three, or third, uh, three, four clutch pack feed. Then there's another hole on the other side. That's gonna be our forward feed. Let me start to spin it around. This is the coast clutch feed. Uh, fumbling around here. There's the there's the forward feed. So I should have took take that out of the bag, but I will eventually. All right, uh, Durabon wide rear sun gear bushing. I never installed a factory thin bushing because it likes to walk. Uh, they didn't replace any of the bushings in this transmission. I mean, look at this. Uh, it's already starting to walk out. It's heavily scored. It needed a new reaction shaft as well. Uh, when they put the old one back together um, with the 3-4 uh, clutch hub, all of these splines here, which as you can see are you know in good shape. 
all the splines were so wore out that it was probably within a thousand miles of stripping and you would have had uh, no 3-4. Um, what else did we replace? Front planet. Uh, look at the bushing in the extension housing. Again, this is what they, you know, put back onto this unit. This is how they, they did it. So you got to replace bushings. All right. As mentioned, new low roller clutch. Uh, I also re replaced the return spring assembly for the low reverse piston. Uh, low reverse clutch pack was compromised. I don't believe they put an overhaul kit in this thing anyway. Um, overhaul kit meaning this paper and rubber kit here. When I use the term overhaul kit or any transmission builder or industry you know, member uses that term, it's this packet that they're referring to. And as you can see, it says overhaul kit produced by Transtech. So you ask for an overhaul kit, that is what they're going to sell you. They're not going to sell you all the other parts you see here on the bench, um, unless you're buying a banner kit, a cow kit, or some other combined kit that will enable you to um, get everything or most everything you need. Okay, here is the Sonic Smart Shell. They did install that. Um, I'm going to put a different thrust washer in because the one that came out of here was like bent up or something. You can see where there was a lot of contact being made between the uh, uh the forward drum that came out of this thing and the shell. So a little bit of scoring down there. It's mostly superficial. It's not structurally compromising the shell in any way. I mean, the splines are in, still in perfect shape. Uh, the bearing incidentally is in perfect shape. So when we use that, I have, I have bearings soaking in transmission fluid. But um, overall, just a plethora of errors and things not attended to and not accounted for in that previous build. Okay, here's the case. So, as I mentioned, low reverse clutch pack got a little toasty. Anytime that happens, you want to take a finger and you want to run your finger all along the sealing surfaces here down in the case for your low reverse piston seals. So, the reason why you have to be concerned whenever the low reverse clutch pack fails is a lot of the, like, you know, little fine metal particles and particulate matter will kind of get up in between the sealing surface and the case and the seals themselves and you know as the transmission still working and you know trying to go in and out of reverse or manual low um, all of that metal will score up those sealing surfaces and you'll eventually destroy the case I and mean, uh, there's no known way to recondition that sealing surface down there at least not at a production level where you know it's something that anyone can either do or you know a procedure where any machine shop um, will perform to recondition it to my knowledge. You know, my machinists don't do it, and I haven't heard of anybody else doing it. All right, so here's everything that came out of this thing. And as you can see, I mean, look at that forward drum. It is just catastrophically failed. Um, I have to go and grab another 3-4 uh, clutch apply ring out of my stock to put that on the bench. But needless to say, um, <laughs> If you make these kinds of errors, especially considering that I believe this thing failed due to um, an interference fit between all the guts in the case and the case itself, or at least that's part of it. Uh, the other thing they did, and I didn't even notice this when I did the teardown, is they blocked off, for whatever goddamn reason, they blocked off the little air bleed on the drum. And I've never seen that before. I don't know why anyone would do that. If you guys know, you know, uh, please let me know in the comments or whatever, because I'd be curious to learn why or what benefit that conveys. So um, another transmission builder that watches my channel and, you know, I interact with him periodically. He thinks that there was an overpressure condition in the drum that was mostly caused by them doing this. This is JB Weld. And that resulted in the catastrophic failure, caused the failure. So he might be right. I have to study a hydraulics diagram to know for sure. But anyway, reverse input drum was smoked. I mean, the band surface is completely warped. And that's how they put it back in like that. So uh, here's the separator plate. I mean, it's got some rust on it. But you see they... Either they or somebody prior to them did repair the one, two check ball seating location. It's a common problem with these uh, to wear out and the ball gets stuck in the plate, but they hogged it out to 93 thousandths in a factory application uh, for the one, two shift with the pinless accumulator and the Corvette servo. Uh, I would not recommend you do that. I would recommend you either leave it stock or maybe up to 76 thousand, something like that. And then they did put a steel module in. So, you know, um, good on them for that. 
Now here's the smoke low reverse steel set. Um, I have to see what the clearance is for low reverse because I have a feeling that this thing had a selective steel in it. They didn't notice it or realize that that was important. And so, you know, they left it out. Um, this is the 3-4 applying backing plate set. Given the failure, the drama, I mean, they look physically okay, but I don't trust them. Here's the forward clutch backing plate. And as you can see, it's all messed up, you know, all kind of problems. A lot of uh, rough interaction in parts there. And then here's the reverse input clutch backing plate. And, you know, this is how it went back in when this previous shop was done with the unit. I would have never put this back in like that. So, again, as I mentioned, new low roller clutch, new sprag, and the sprag retainers all look like this when they're brand new. Uh, the unfortunately, this race was no good. It, you know, it got compromised. You know, probably during you know the the accident here. And this is the old um, low reverse uh, return spring assembly. Like I said, I don't really trust it. Um, for all I know, it could have been dragging because maybe the springs were wore out. So I'm just replacing it. And then here are all the old bearings. This is the Sonics bearing. This is actually in good shape. I'm probably going to put this back in, um, or I may have another one. But the rest of these, I'm probably going to just junk. And then here's the band, you know, uh, <laughs> this band's seen better days. I mean, I think it might've been a, a used band, but it could have been new, who knows? So other than the low reverse clutch pack, all the other ones are fine. So here's low reverse. And as you can see, it's delamination on one of the line plates, you know, the lining's coming off and the rest of them are just burnt on one or both sides. So anyway, one parting shot of the drum that get this cell phone camera to focus all right so david that's what we're doing with your transmission uh hopefully when we go back with it put it back on the road it'll work perfectly fine for you um we'll fix all the errors that were made and do what we need to do to get this thing right again so as always thank you very much for the opportunity and for everyone else thanks for watching have a great rest of your day and evening